Hey, this is Dave, uh, back with another installment of Summit Racing Quick Flicks, and this time around we're going to talk about uh, motor oils, synthetic versus conventional. Before you really get into uh, which type of oil between the conventionals and synthetics is right for your application and uh, the different performance benefits of each, um, it's really important to understand uh, how each type is made and how that uh, affects uh, the actual performance of the oil itself. So we'll start with the conventional here. Uh, that's basically it's just a crude oil out of the ground. It's then refined. Uh, it's basically just a mineral-based oil. Uh, the synthetic, on the other hand, uh, that goes to a lab. Uh, it's then resynthesized by men in white coats that are much smarter than me. Uh, they take the molecules, they separate them out, they make them more uniform. Uh, so there's just more uniformity uh, throughout the makeup of the oil. And then in the middle, you have semi synthetics. You take a, basically a conventional oil and you'll add some element of synthetic to it, uh, usually maybe up to a 30% makeup of synthetic oil to the conventional oil. So those are the three types and how they're made up. Uh, as far as viscosities, uh, you'll see ratings on all your on all your different bottles of oil. You know, this one's 10W30. Uh, viscosity is basically a rating of uh, the oil's flow uh, and how well it flows against resistance. So uh, this one, for example, is a 10W30. Uh, it's a multi-viscosity. When you see the two different numbers on here, it's got two different viscosity ratings. One on the low end with the W, the W stands for winter, so it's for colder temperatures. And then on the higher and higher temperatures, uh, which are basically denoted as uh, over 100 degrees Celsius. So how it flows above 100 degrees Celsius operating temperatures. Um, okay, so in addition to uh, different uh, viscosity weights, uh, manufacturers also have different additives that they'll put into their oils. Uh, for example, uh, different detergents. This is a clean engine formula. It's supposed to reduce contaminants and, and sludging in the conventional oil. So they got the added detergents in there for that. Over here, uh, this is Edelbrox uh, synthetic that has a zinc enhanced formula. Uh, it's important to note that if you're running a flat tappet camshaft uh, setup, you, you've got to have uh, some element of zinc in your oil. Used to be back in the day, oils came with the zinc in there. EPA did its number and got rid of that. Uh, but for flat tappet applications to pre prevent that metal to metal contact on those components, you've got to have some sort of zinc in your oil and if you don't, you need to put some sort of additive like this one in there. Uh, that being said, uh, let's take a look at the different advantages of each type of oil. Starting with the conventional, biggest advantage there, uh, cost. It's typically the lowest cost of the, the three different types. Uh, synthetic is catching up. Uh, the, the margin between the two is getting lower and lower. Uh, uh, important to note on the, the conventional type oils, if you're running a conventional in, in your car and you have been, you're probably just fine. I mean, you keep up with the, with the uh, right intervals of changing to 3,000 miles. If you're pretty religious about that, uh, stay with this. this. This is probably your best bet. Uh, however, there's a lot to be said for the synthetics, especially in performance applications and heavier duty applications. Uh, you cannot really go wrong with the synthetics outside of the negligible uh, price increase over the, the conventional. And it's important to note too that you probably aren't going to have to change your oil as often with this type of oil. So uh, you're going to recoup some of that money, that extra money you might have spent on the oil itself as compared to the conventional. And, and again, that, that brings the cost, uh, makes it a little bit more cost effective. Um, Advantages though of the synthetic, let's take a look back at how it's made again. Again, it goes through a resynthesizing process, uh, makes the molecules in the oil a little bit more uniform. It won't break down under heat as much. There's not as many contaminants. You don't have to worry about sludging like you might in a conventional oil if you don't change it as often as you should. Uh, it's a thinner oil. It's great for winter time. It's not as thick. It's good for startups on those cold winter mornings. Uh, and because it's a little bit thinner and, and more slippery than the conventional oil, uh, it's good good fuel economy. Uh, you know, there's not as much uh, resistance as that uh, engine's rotating. Uh, and for that same reason, you may experience uh, slight power gains. It's debatable, uh, but you know, if you if you got a heavy duty application towing, you know, you're getting on the gas a little bit more often uh, than you would on a daily driver. 
Uh, synthetics, definitely probably the way to go. Uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, semi-synthetic gives you a little bit of the best of both sides. It's a little bit less expensive than full synthetics. However, uh, it's a little bit more protection uh, and peace of mind uh, with this than there would be in a conventional oil. You might not have to change it quite as often. So you get a little bit of the best of both worlds on the synthetics. Uh, one thing I do want to mention on the conventional oil, though, you might notice if you're ever shopping on summitracing.com, engine braking oils are also always typically uh, conventional style oil. Why is that? Um, Conventional oil will bond a little bit more to new engine parts than uh, synthetic. If you think about uh, the two types of oils here, conventional is more of a bonding property. You know, it kind of bathes the new parts in the oil. Whereas think of the synthetic as more of a ball bearing type uh, action when it, when it lubricates. Uh, kind of puts a film between the moving parts, acts as ball bearings, and the parts roll up against one another. This will, will bond and get into those new parts. It's great for breaking in new engines. Again, though, keep in mind, you need to make sure that, that zinc phosphate, that zinc additive is put in there. A couple other common sense tips I wanted to point out. Uh, again, I mentioned it before, but if you're using a conventional oil and it's been working for you, you could probably stick to it as long as you, you meet the change intervals. If it's a 3,000 mile oil, make sure you keep up on that. Uh, you can't really go wrong stepping up with the synthetic. Uh, there's really no disadvantage to doing that. But again, uh, if you're looking to save a few bucks minimally, you can stick with the conventional. As always, consult with your owner's manual and also consider your climate. If you live in a, a uh, area where winter time rears its ugly head and it gets really cold, you know, make sure you look at the lower end, uh, consider a 5W, 10W, whatever, uh, lower end on that multi-viscosity rating. Make sure you have those easier startups in the winter. Uh, one other thing, if you're going to go out now and search for conventional versus synthetic transmission fluids, probably save you most of the trouble because a lot of these uh, principles we talked about apply to your transmission fluids. Uh, conventional is fine. Again, on that side, if you've been using it, you can stick to it. Uh, again, advantage there on the transmission fluid side, cost, uh, conventional is a little bit less than the synthetic. Uh, on the synthetic side, same principles there. Uh, it resists the sludging, uh, it's more uniform on the molecular structure, uh, so uh, it you won't break down under high temperatures. You may not have to change it quite as often. There's less uh, contaminants in, in the uh, synthetic transmission fluid. So, but again, uh, consult your, your owner's manual on how often to uh, change your transmission fluid. You want to steer you away from uh, doing your due diligence there. But again, uh, same principles apply, motor oil to transmission fluid when you're talking about conventionals versus synthetics. So do we cover what you're looking for? Do you have further questions? Or do you, would you like us to expand on uh, something that we mentioned in this video? Uh, be sure to leave a question or a suggestion for a topic in the comments section below. And uh, remember to check out some of our other quick flick videos over here on the side or hit the subscribe button right down there.